All right, everybody, welcome back. We're going to go over sinus arrhythmia today. So let's just first look at this EKG, and then I'll explain to you uh, kind of the mechanism behind sinus arrhythmia. So when we look at this EKG, what you'll notice is we've got, we'll just go quickly, narrow QRSs. We've got P waves that conduct the QRSs every time. There's P waves or sinus P waves. I know they're sinuses because if I look in lead one, that's an upright P wave in lead one. It's an upright P wave in AVF. That tells me that it's coming from the sinus node because the P wave is going down to the left, right? It's positive in the down lead. It's positive in the left lead. So that means that I'm going down to the left, which is typical of sinus node causing atrial depolarization. That's what we're looking at with those P waves. And what you'll notice in this rhythm is that we've got a, a rate of roughly 300, 150, 175 beats per minute here in these two beats. And then in these beats over here, we've got maybe 300, 150, 100 beats per minute. And so we know that the sinus node, node typically beats between 60, 100 beats per minute. In this rhythm, we have a variation of beats that are at about 75 and beats that are about 100 beats per minute. And so you might think, oh, why is this speeding up and slowing down? Well, that's because, hint, hint, title of the video, sinus arrhythmia. So let's talk about what sinus arrhythmia is. Sinus arrhythmia is essentially a change in the heart rate or a change in the sinus rate with inspiration and expiration. And we'll explain why. And the, and the biggest reason why we have changes with inspiration and expiration is because changes in intrathoracic pressure when we inspire and when we expire actually change the amount of blood that's returning to the heart. And then it changes the amount of beats per minute that heart is going to uh, be at to move that blood along. So let's talk about what that means. So we'll start off with, we'll go to this screen here. We'll start off with one inspiration. So we know when we inspire, we have our, our diaphragm. I don't know if I spelled that right, our diaphragm, our intercostals. All of those muscles, they cause our thoracic, uh, the space in our thoracic cavity to expand. And ultimately the idea is to decrease, when we inspire, we're decreasing intra-thoracic pressure to allow for air to move in. Well, our heart is within our thorax. And so when you decrease the pressure inside the thorax, you're also decreasing that pressure um, inside of your heart. And so what that allows for is when you decrease the pressure, this pressure in the heart is decreasing. So more blood can come in from our SVC and our IVC, our vena cava, into the right side of the heart. And so actually what you end up getting is increase blood flow to the heart or increase preload. And so the heart is gonna recognize, oh my gosh, I'm getting a lot more blood flow. And so what is it gonna do? It is going to say, okay, I need to pump that blood forward. I have more blood coming in. So it's gonna increase the heart rate to handle the preload. Well, how does it increase the heart rate? We know that our AV or SA node here has innervation from our parasympathetic and sympathetic uh, nervous system. And so young, healthy people have really good abilities, high, you know, high capabilities of altering their, their sympathetic and parasympathetic tone. And so in this case, we want to decrease our parasympathetic drive, which we know this is our resting uh, nervous system. And so ultimately that's going to cause our heart rate to increase. So on the EKG, you can see when we inspire, 
we would say that this zone, when we see this increase in heart rate here, this is due to inspiration because we see this heart rate is getting faster. So this would make sense. We know that five little boxes, one, two, three, four, five, is one second. That's one second. We've got one, two, three, four, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, right? So that's about a normal respiration rate. Every two to three seconds, we'll inspire and then expire and inspire and expire. So that's our inspiration where we get that increase in heart rate due to the change in thoracic pressure. Let's talk about expiration. So expiration is the exact opposite where we are trying to expel that gas out of our thorax into the environment. And so we do that by increasing intra-thoracic pressure. For all of those muscles that we said, the diaphragm, our intercostals, they relax, causing our chest wall to collapse on itself and increase the pressure. Well, when we increase the pressure, and come back to my heart here, when we increase the amount of pressure inside the thorax, we are consequently increasing the pressure within the heart itself. And that pressure gradient from the SVC and IVC to the right side of the heart is going to uh, decrease. And what we'll have is decreasing return to the heart or decrease in our preload. So you have less blood coming into the heart during expiration with that increase in thoracic pressure, we have less blood coming in. And so our heart says, okay, I don't have to push as much blood through. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to decrease the heart rate. We decrease our heart rate by pumping up our parasympathetic tone. You might hear this referred to as vagal tone. And if you've ever heard of somebody doing a vagal maneuver, that's when you bear down as if you're going to the bathroom. And that actually is doing the same thing. It's increasing that intrathoracic pressure in the same way. So a vagal maneuver, vagal tone, bearing down. This is all kind of these... Uh, similar terms that we would use. So we're ultimately doing that to increase that parasympathetic tone. It'll decrease the heart rate. So expiration, increase intra thoracic pressure, less blood returning to the heart. So our heart doesn't need to beat as much. It accomplishes that with vagal response or increasing our parasympathetic nervous system output. And that comes from the vagus nerve or cranial nerve 10. So this all kind of correlates uh, to each other. And so when you look at the EKG, when this is producing the expiratory phase of our sinus arrhythmia, you can see here at our 75 beats per minute section, this is our expiratory phase. And you can see beforehand, you can see the transition from the fast to slow. So this is our inspiration. When we expire, get slower. Then we inspire, get faster. And then we expire again, increase our intrathoracic pressure, decrease our preload, decrease our heart rate. And so sinus arrhythmia is going to be uh, more prominent. It is going to be prominent in young athletes. Why is that? Because we think of young athletes have a, a, a lower resting heart rate. We know that that is because they have a high parasympathetic tone or a really high vagal tone. And that's really a good marker of cardiovascular health. So good cardiovascular health, you can, you can maybe tell somebody, hey, you've got a good sinus arrhythmia which is actually nothing pathologic to this. And you could, you know, maybe reassure somebody that um, their 
their heart health is potentially um, given the clinical kind of scenario and in, in, in good health. Um, so I hope this helps when you see this sinus rhythm that it seems to be a little bit irregular, but recognizing what is irregular and what is um, pathologic versus what is just a sinus arrhythmia is important because these fluctuations in heart rate, 75 to 100, um, it's not a small jump. So we need to make sure that we are ruling out things like AV blocks or sinus node dysfunction. And so I'm having confidence in this concept will be very helpful for you. Yeah, hope that helps. If you have any questions or comments, throw them out there and we'll do it again.